everyone, it's the Second Sister here, and welcome to episode 12 of Monster Mod Mondays, where I show off mods from the Monster Prom fandom with all of you. Today, we're gonna be showing off the mod I tried showing off last week, Judgment Day by, friend, by a friend of mine, Sapphire Claw, and unfortunately I don't have her with me today to guest star because she's she has some... Her schedule's all cleared up, but that's okay. That's okay. She's got her priorities straight. In the meantime, I was able to pick up a guest the last minute. Introduce yourself. Oh. Hello. You can call me Mazako. I'm a regular on the Monster Prom Discord. I... Oh, what? 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 Okay, that was just echo. <laughs> but... Yeah, so I'm n I don't exactly have a presence online except I do write a web novel. So Which is that good. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I'll share that at the end of this, but for now let's focus on the mod. Let's focus on Judgment Day. Whoa. Do you wanna narrate? Hello? Yes, yeah. Yeah, wait, no, I'm right, I mute my mic, right. Unmute your mic. I want you to narrate. <laughs> ah, spooky high school, the sweetest years of our lives. Back then we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid. But always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Okay. I always keep I always play as Vicky, so I want to try playing as a Mira instead today. Let's start a fire. Hmm, how coincidental. I'm you know, I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try playing as Brian. You got it. And we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the Monster Prom! I remember it clearly. Three weeks were left, and as we were fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our eight most charismatic classmates. And this is where the guests and I talk about what we think of the characters. Starting yeah. with... Scott Howell, 21! He is adorable. <coughs> a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain for his stupidly huge heart. He's a himbo. What? <laughs> a himbo. A himbo. Yes, I've been. Ta I taught. I was learned that was a thing that supplies him. What exactly is a himbo? I'm sorry. Okay, so the old. So, the term bimbo normally applies to a woman who's very attractive, but kind of airheaded. Yes. So, a himbo is the male version of that. Examples include Scott here and <laughs> apparently Johnny Bravo. <laughs> but Johnny Bravo's not attractive, though. He's just the ladies' man wannabe. Yeah, he's also about as bright as a sack of bricks. On. Yep. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19. Kyle Fischler. <laughs> a sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Ah, yeah, she's Ariel, except with bloodthirst. That's Princess Clara. Princess Clara? I feel like I know that reference. Uh, either way. Um, are you familiar with John's mother? <clears throat> oh, God, right. Oh, uh, flashbacks. Terrible flashbacks. <laughs> Flashbacks to the movie. I, I just remember the very awkward stripper episode. Oh yes, I remember that one where Clara wants to get her father's attention. Yeah, no, no, no. We are going. <laughs> oh wait, no, this is right on the screen. Yes, they're basically like the Game of Thrones people. Oh yes. Hello, 
retro gamer Kevin, welcome. <laughs> Poly guys, twenty two. It's best girl. It's best yes. girl. <laughs> <coughs> A party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things, and uh, and that makes everything right about her. Yes. Also, I'm 90% sure she it is the romantic interest in a lot of 90s movies or 80s. 80s or 90s? Um, probably 90s. No, wait, no. 90s love interests were a bunch of tom tomboys who just need a little bit of sprucing up. No, she's the major female protagonist in, like, female... Early 2000s. Female lead. Yeah. If the lead is a f if the if the main character is a female, that'd be Polly. Or she's the big sister type for the protagonist. But let's move on. Yeah, the big sister type, big sister Polly. She's the best big sister. <laughs> Damien Levay, twenty-one. Hello, spicy red daddy. Eight K. A fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. If I was playing Vicky, I always beeline for Damien. Why? Because I ship that hard. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. When I when I play as Vicky, I also go for Damien. Damien or Liam. Yes. It's because again, it's it's Disney Channel face. Okay, you got the bad boy, the good girl. Just kiss, kiss. It's. It's total dramas Duncan and Corny, only more healthy. Yes, that too. Oh god, flashbacks. Mm -hmm. Liam the Lion Court, 420, blaze it. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm not wrong. No. <laughs> Fine, 400 something. A hipster vampire whose stern opposite demeanor hid the fact that he was truly a lovable duck. Ah, yes, the nerdy love interest of all movies. Yep. And meanwhile, this is my first ever target when playing Monster Prom because I, one look at his one look at him and one look at his description and I'm thinking, oh my god, I'm actually dating this person in real life. Yep. There are days I wish I was like this person, but um, at the same time, I'm nowhere near that cool. Plus, suspenders don't exactly fit well on me. He can't yeah. hear me. He's in the next room, but he God, knows I love cute. him. God, too cute. Zoe for ever? It's the wife. It's the wife. The, <laughs> the ultimate wa waifu, an eldritch cutie who went from endless deity of the dark realms to ultimate fangirl, aka the reverse of anime progression. I don't know. And one of the playable characters in Monster Prom Reverse. Woo. Side note, I do actually remember this old visual novel from Once Upon a Time where you were trying to go after this girl who was actually a Cthulhu horror. There was a lot of other stuff to it, but it was dramatic, minor horror, and for some reason you ate somebody later. But enough of that. Let's move on. Yeah. Calculus, a Hewlett Packard version 1.0. He is, he, he is Robo Baby, yes. <coughs> a library computer who had become a sentient robot ready to experience life to its fullest. Ooh, ooh. Also, Jacksepticeye. Yes. Hi, DB. And yes, yep. you, actually, you actually have my... Thanks for telling me that I have my mic on this time. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, let's see. Comments about him. Yeah. And Vera Oblin, 23. She scares me, but in a sexy way. Hello, crime mama. <laughs> a mean, self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. On a side note, my friends absolutely love her for some reason. Again, she scares me. Because she has big step on me energy. Oh god, my friends are bottoms. <laughs> and so am I. <laughs> oh it was clear. It had to be one of them. But who? Who? We only have three weeks to choose our prom date, and even more dancing, we only have three weeks to woo them and conquer their hearts. Oh no. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Yay. 
Welcome to Monster Prom, stupidest pop quiz ever. All mines run, but they're run in so many different ways. Worry no more, we're now using our PhD and bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Prom, <coughs> Monster Prom, stupidest pop quiz ever, TM. Still, we'll throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character stats, like high school. <laughs> this way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Oh, if only. Let's start. Oh, I haven't been to high school since 2013. <laughs> uh, let's see, mine was 2014, ugh. Oh my god, okay, you're younger than me. Now then, if you could- Now, Amira, if you could go back in time, what's one thing you'd tell your younger self? Oh, why should we assume still a younger me needs advice? I've grown up to have a freaking time machine, so I must have done something right. Screw younger me, we're going straight to Woodstock, baby. Whoop, whoop. Okay, now for me, hmm. I tell myself not to teach that robot how to fall in love, as romantic as it might have seemed at the moment. It started the robot revolution of 2037, way worse than the much more positive robot sexual revolution of 2043. <laughs> so smart. Well, it's your chance to fix global warming. Go ahead. Mm, nah, the world's doomed. Hey, I think DB decided to host me. I can't see it, but thank you. World is doomed, but I'll start investing in Chef's Star profitable business for the soon to be covered by Water World. Uh oh. It's time to be a real hero! I'll lead a mission to the sun in order to invite the sun to a party of its life! We will have so many hilarious misadventures that the sun will eventually become cooler. Okay, that wasn't him. Who was it? Who hosted me? Okay, I forgot to mute you. <laughs> yeah, echoes. So, what would be the most appealing in a love partner? A big taste for a taste for party, tentacles, fifty gigabytes of RAM, solid fur, kawaii eyes, or a big horn. Let's call it that. Let's call it a big horn. A taste for party. You find a genie in a bottle. You can ask for whatever you want. What do you ask for? Him not to be so cliched. A genie and wishes so mainstream. A rainbow that you can eat. To feel truly alive. I don't ask for anything. I drink the genie from the bottle. I can grab my own wishes. Before asking for anything, you try to negotiate up to the three standards or for Shinji and Kaoru to become canon. Mmm. Hmm, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Him not to be so cliched. So mainstream. Hmm. Meanwhile, I gotta check to see who. <coughs> who's hosting me? Oh! Thank you, Lucas, for going to. Lucas is going to, for following me. Hello! Oh, and also, from the past week. Thank you, Hatsune Miku, the guest from last week. Thank you, lowercase delta. And that's it. Huh, maybe at some point I should set my own Twitch. Mm, yep. I'm gonna head to the auditorium. Hey, girl, Mira, what's it gonna be today? No, I think I prefer this voice for Valerie better. Oh, wow, that was fast. A T102 um, processor. Busted is this is this the star of the mod? Yeah. Huh. It's busted or unreasonable. Why'd you want this anyway, huh? Thank you. Have a good one. Um. Well then, let's embrace the madness and let's go boost my charm. Yeah. <laughs> I'll narrate yeah. for you to narrate for me. Later Him. in the halls, you ran to Polly and Liam, who seem to be talking about some kind of flyer. Flyers for an upcoming music festival. How the palooza! <laughs> so, we agree on everything for Friday, right? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, wait, no, I gotta change that. <laughs> <laughs> and Saturday, we should like totally go for to go to Messer Chops and imagine a freaking dragon. 
Okay, question. Do you want him to sound confident or silly? Confident. Oh. Him. Sure, those bands are great, and then at 3 a.m., I want to check out that guy in the parking lot who just makes a cackle for me for two hours. Um, uh, ghosts are, like, super into cacophonies, but at 3 a.m., I want to go to MC Griffin. Cool. I mean, it's a freaking Griffin that raps! It's, like, the hottest stuff right now, Liam. You know, the hottest shit right now is in the criteria I use to pick the artists I want to see, right? Yeah, Griffin! That rhymes, Liam! Um, there should be a better way to decide this other than repeating our choices in a loud, annoying tone. But I love the loud, annoying tone thing. <laughs> I know, still. You might have the ultimate trick for how to choose the best schedule for this music festival. Hmm. Get to as much ayahuasca as possible until some kind of spirit animal appears and shares his wisdom with you. Or, don't fight over this. The one who wins will get to see their artist live for an hour or two, but the one who loses will get to complain about it until the end of time. Bottom. Oh, a solution that involves hating stuff in a very public way? Count me in. I mean, you're actually right. I'm already getting to see stuff I enjoy. So getting one hate watching system would be healthy for my cred. Usually I can only totally shit on stuff without really knowing a lot about it. But actually attending the concert? No problem. That's going the extra mile. Yeah, some reviewers should try that when reviewing their favorite or least series TV shows. Yeah, yeah. Griffin? You bet, Paulina. See ya. <coughs> I'm going to practice my eye rolling and sighing. Not and good job on practicing your coughing. Oh, sweetheart, you're a dork to the point where you're actually lovable. To be fair, I was going to make him sound like Urkel, but. Ah, <laughs> uh, classic Liam. You saw the situation with your knowledge of hipster culture. You gain plus two smarts, plus one charm. Penguins! How cute a video would be where a charming cat becomes friends with a cat while becoming friends with a bunny or a cat becoming friends with a penguin? Kitten I'm gonna penguins. concede. Yeah, no, like, just wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Kittens and penguins. That, yeah, what could, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. What could be more adorable than that? I'm gonna go woo Liam more. When you arrive at their table, you find that Polly and Liam aren't eating. They're just taking pictures of their food. Hey, boo. Hey. Welcome to the show. <laughs> to eat, so we just take dope food. Take some, baby. We believe that food like children should be seen and not tasted. That, that context, man. Yeah, I mean, have you ever tasted a baby? Have you? I don't know. Maybe? My weekends are usually kind of a blur, like last Saturday. There will be plenty of time to chronicle your sex plates later, Polly. Did Liam know? Right no. now, we need to focus on these food picks. Liam, I'm pretty sure Polly did not have sex with a baby. No, no, no. I mean, she might have eaten one. Oh. Like, eaten one that way, no. Like, yeah. we know Polly does all the wrong things, but... That's a wrong thing even she won't do. Yeah. Actually, I remember this weird horror movie about this lady who wanted a youth back, so she made fetus dumplings. Ew. Well, that's no... That's... I mean... The Duchess of Bath 3 is worse. It was just weird. Okay, anyway, well, Liam and... While Liam and Polly were busy bantering, you were busily arranging a dope food pick of your own. And now to complete your mashed piece. A food pick, but instead of food, it's just a bottle of whiskey with ketchup on it. <coughs> or a food pick of Liam taking a food pick. That, that one, yes, please. So mad. <coughs> you love your phone and Liam just as he's about to snap a food pick, but his vampire reflexes are too quick for you. 
Ha! Trying to outmeta the Meta Master, are you? We'll see about that. Lane levels is but Apollo, you just about she's about to take a food pick. Now you're taking a food pick of a food pick of a food pick. Whoa. Are, are we putting our phones at each other now? I'm gonna play too! Suddenly, Polly's got her phone pointed at you. It's a food pick of 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 a my god, infinity! We've done it! We've created the meta triangle! The most meta shape in existence! This is our finest hour! I love how you're able to create a blend between confidence and silly. No, keep the blend. Keep the blend. Yes. Okay. The world around you dissolves in the green islands <coughs> of numbers and letters. You've done it! You can see the code! You are the one! I am a poor allegory of Jesus! The programming of the video game you are in awards you by raising your relationship points with the character known as Liam. Let's do this! Okay. No. Ah. No. Every time I try to win over the narrator, the, the route doesn't seem to want to continue. Huh. Maybe you gotta play without mods or something. Or do it by yourself first. Maybe. No, I will not partake in your self-insert fanfic. I did, did. Were you calling someone out for that one? Oh, okay. No, <coughs> there is a but the narrator itself. Yeah. There is a but to lift a glass of scotch to immaculately painted lips. You can drink whatever at this school, apparently. When Miranda screams. This scotch costs more than most cars. Has your taster tried it yet? What taster? You don't have a taster? What if your drink is poisoned by someone jealous of your good looks and royal title? Listen, Mary, I only drink four things. Scotch, red wine, the tears of my enemies, and straight up poison. AKA the Thursday special. Y you drink poison on purpose? Miranda, my hair is venomous snakes. You think poison actually harms me? Well, well, you should have a taste. Still have a taster. But if someone puts a really spicy hot sauce in your drink, or, or poison. Oh, Miranda, baby, no, no, no. Uh, what do I have to do to get you to drop this? Simple, hire a taster. Fine, any volunteers? <clears throat> this might just be the big break you've been looking for. You raise your hand, and when Vera picks you, you pretend to be poison, terrifying Miranda, and amusing Vera. You shoot Vera a wink, take the tiniest sip of a scotch, and then. <coughs> oh god! No, no, stop vomiting! How will you be able to taste the poison if you too busy foaming at the mouth and vomiting? <laughs> you fool! She's poisoned! Run and tell the authorities where this poor sap's face melts off or something. Oh dear! Oh my! I'm no good in crisis situations! Curse my uniform, blue pleasant childhood! Miranda faints with the utmost drama. If there's one thing princes are good at, it's fainting! Complete yeah. with a fainting couch. She has fainting I couch, serves. Yeah, no, she would definitely have just the the 1800 fainting couch. Oh dear, I have the vapors. <laughs> that was hilarious. I should put poison in my scotch more often. <laughs> yes. You can stop vomiting now, by the way, if she's passed out. Oh, do you need the antidote? All right, here you go. I, I guess I should have let you know that the scotch was actually poisoned. Some like Coke, some like fizzy waters. Vera likes poison. Spirit Vera. Vera likes arsenic. Oh well. How about we go get ice cream to make up for it? Yeah. Your stomach's still too weak for ice cream, but you're not too sick to spend some quality time with Vera. Next! <coughs> Monster Prom. Monster Rancher. Monster Rancher? I'm old. <laughs> I'm not that old, but yeah. You're younger than me. Okay, fine. I'm nerdier. How entertaining it would be if Shakespeare brought to life only for this purpose played this game on 
<laughs> okay, no, Monster Prom wins this one. I'm sorry. Monster Ranch is about, you know, putting in your mom's Mariah Carey CD and summoning a dragon from it. This is... Yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> Let me fix my cat's have a tie. Wait, is Mariah Carey still relevant? <coughs> you find a secluded spot to study the processor. All you can make out is ozone and calcul... Calculester? Is this meant to be a part for him? Him. Hello, Amira. I cannot help but notice you out here alone. Aw. DB says you're both younger than me. <laughs> 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 and also asking who you are. Who's, your, who's my guest today? Oh, hi. I'm Mizako. I'm your resident um, web novelist, regular on the Discord, and general funny voice person. <laughs> okay, maybe the... Maybe her, uh... Okay, maybe the Vera and Valerie subplot is something else. Okay! I'm actually... Roll with it! Surprise. Ooh. Ooh, sounds like she's getting steamy already. Oh my. Oh no! Must regain processor! Must regain processor! Must succeed for Ozone Web! Oh no! Out of nowhere, calculus will start trying to strangle you. If you're into that, who am I to judge? But the look on his face is... scary. Yeah, the air... Yeah, the red screen of death. God, that that is a horror story. And Wait, I just heard a random voice. A wild Vera appears! Oh, not today, bot breath! Vera sticks a thumb drive into calculus's ass and he shuts down... Is that bad touch? That should hold the ozone web at bay. What? What happened? I shut down and... Oh no, ozone web is back. I thought it was destroyed. Obviously not. Did you get to Liam already? Ozone web? Liam? What's going on? Although you haven't seen Liam all day and calculated to strangle you, which could be bad. <coughs> Uh-oh. I'm afraid not, friend Vera. Don't worry, I'm here. I was working on my yaoi. Oh, thanks, Satan. Because that floppy disk that Damien has got found was sent from the future to kill you. What? I... But... I have Blue, Brian, Amira, and Yellow to thank for preventing... Okay, that's a... Sapphire Claw, a bit of a bug here, but whatever. I mean... We don't have a blue or a yellow player with us today. No, you know what they're doing? They're busy being in the background trying to get dates with the least, the less charismatic people. <laughs> no, Vicky got a bad grade and she's, and instead of going, getting prom day, she's reworking, she's working on her grades anyway. Oz has an awkward family reunion. Well, I guess the question remains, how do we stop Ozone Web? Let's get weapons! <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Or a I don't know which one's which. I'll I'll let you handle this. Baby's in a corner somewhere. Oh, what the? That was fun. Yeah. How cliche. Focus. How cliche is a training montage? I calculate a sixty-nine percent chance <laughs> that this will refresh Amira's hacking skills. Oh, fine, but make it quick. I'm not paying for a twenty-minute montage. Okay, no, life would be way more convenient if you could pay for a montage to happen. <laughs> you crack your knuckles and get to work. Drawing upon the different skills you use to hack the arcane virus that became Calculister, you start to glow. Well, Amira glowing makes sense since she is a genie. Yes. Stop trying to impress me. Fuck, Liam. You're getting three smarts. Okay, um, to boost my boldness since it, it <coughs> You're walking with Liam later when suddenly a holy cross bolt slams into the wall next to you. Oh no, it's the Slayer. Prepare to die! Prepare to die! She, she already said it, you don't need to. Oh yeah. You flee with Liam and manage to get out of sight. Now's the perfect time for you to hide while Liam turns into a bat. He's not transforming. You ask him why the hell he's just standing there instead of changing. 
It just seems a little cliche, doesn't it? A vampire turning a bat? Honestly, I'm over it. <sighs> if I could turn into, for example, the concept of a bat, now that would be a change worth making. You don't even know what that means, but if you can't get Leo to turn into something soon, he'll get you both caught. Oh boy. You quickly tell him to change into a hot dog stand or a general feeling of unease. A hot dog stand, because the last time I did this last one was creativity, so yeah, hot dog stand. A hot dog stand? That's revolutionary! People hate bats and vampires, but they love hot dogs and hot dog stands. It's so unexpected. You know, I need channel more Danny Sex Bane. Quick, hide inside my bun warmer. Oh my. Leon transforms into a hot dog stand with a hip black and purple color scheme, which somehow doesn't give him away, and a sweet umbrella. You climb inside. You Don't know, I'm never actually seeing... How can he fit? Um, he is the people's bottom. Um, okay. You were saying? <laughs> Bottoms find a way. <laughs> no, no. Yours oh. before? Oh. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a hot dog stand like a proper New Yorker style one before. <clears throat> That's about it. Oh, I've seen New York hot dog <laughs> stands. <laughs> you have so much you to forget you're even hiding from the murderous slayer. You hope this isn't the last time you get to hang out inside Liam. You gain plus two creativity and plus one boldness. Oh ho ho, oh you. Okay, now we're doing that voice again. Um, sure. There you are, minding your own business and spying on your classmates' way when suddenly... Hey, Brian, you're sort of a loser sometimes, right? Holy crap, that keepo. Um, sure. And you hang with other losers like Amira, right? Because Amira is a total loser. Who I happen to maybe develop a young feelings for. Mm, a little something. Yeah. Who I happen to be developing feelings for. Okay, continue. Oh, yeah. Oh. Amira has a great dress. She, she is killing it. Yeah. I can't explain it. She's nowhere near as attractive or wealthy or ruthless as I am. And yet, I find myself so inexplicably drawn to her. I think it's her eyes. It's like there's real depth there, like she's hiding some sort of secret. What do you think it is? Something wonderful or totally lame? I'm gonna be a bro. The secret behind Amira's eyes is the secret! That book has changed her life and her businesses on the cult's confidence is on point. That's an actual book, by the way. I forgot I'm... who it was by a... <coughs> I think it was a, by a Miss Fern. That's B-Y-R-N-E. I'm gonna have to look it up later. So it's the Burns book? <laughs> that was bad. The secret. I loved that book. Any publication that puts me in a position to once again assert my superiority over others with hard work can win me over in a heartbeat. And any monster who reads that kind of book is out to get something for themselves. In this case, possibly me. Sexy. I like a monster who isn't afraid to chase down what she wants, and we all know I'm not too easily won over. Maybe she has a chance for me after all. Vera and Amira Prom Queens. Oh god, their name is even like... <laughs> it has a nice <laughs> ring to it. Thanks, Brian. No Matching. Problem. Maybe they'll let you be a part of the prom court, even if you're just a jester or something. Game plus three fun. Okay, you you gotta admit the idea of a clown Brian is hilarious. Yes. Hmm. Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim versus. Yes. Miss Congeniality. How weird the fan of the selected movie would be. Giant robots, giant kaiju, Comic Con. And you know what Miss Congeniality is about, right? Or no? I remember watching Miss Congeniality with my sister multiple times, yes. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna give this to you. 
because the way you described it, it describes just um, one of the weirdest sure. fandoms that that could ever possibly exist. <coughs> to the auditorium, I need the creativity. My creativity and shit. I was in the Brony fandom, and, and hopefully you don't know how terrible the Brony fandom have become as of late. Lady. Okay, you know what? I was there during the Golden Age. My roommate was a brony, and we played Fallout Equestria. Mm. Boyfriend later, bro bro brony's a brony and brony analyst. Anyway, later you see Liam scrolling through his phone, looking for the like the embodiment of ennui. Aw, little emo boy. Hey, Brian, what are you doing here? Sucking classmates for romantic purposes and offering rather absurd advice? Um, no. I'm being called out like a bitch. Magnificent! I could use some rather absurd advice. Oh, okay. I was exchanging messages with a werequal on this dating site, and all was going on well for a time. Lame. But I've grown tired of exchange. He's a bit clingy, and being clingy is my seventh biggest turnoff. Right between sarcasm and literacy and actually being a pickle and not a person. Pickle Rick! No, the pickle that Scott had fallen in love with. Yeah, that was a thing. <laughs> no, wait, that's why Scott was going after the pickle. The pickle was rejected by Liam. Ah, woe <laughs> is me. The postmodern protocol dictates for me to just ghost him and not talk to him. But that's horrible. I never do that to someone. You see, I'm Liam. Handsomely mysterious, yet a true gentleman. Your tuxedo mask. You basically show up and do nothing. My job here is done, but you didn't do anything. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. But neither do I want the emotional turmoil of telling him how I really feel and having an actual conversation about it. One ordeal. So. So I've settled on just sending him a bunch of emojis and then never texting him again. That should do it, right? The thing is, how can I convey the complex array of sentiment through the friendly language of emojis? Hmm. Well, this is your time to shine. Show Liam you excel at complex sentiments so he might someday feel like sharing them with you. This one, little vampire growing dysentery and overly attached wear koala emoji. It's a little obvious. Oh, that one is clearly the best option. How did I think of it? Because it's very much on the nose. Yeah, good point. Which version should I choose? Little vampire growing disingenuously attached wear koala, or little vampire with silly hat growing disingenuously attached wear koala? What the hell does a wear koala even look like? Um, half man, half koala. <laughs> no, I know that, but are we talking tiny or are we talking big? Like, short. Fun size, got it. Maybe the silly hat is not suited for the situation. Let's go with the classic. Okay, just sent it. He texted me back, let's see. Oh, the wear quality being understanding of the little vampire's feelings. I respect them even if a bit hurt emoji. Oddly specific. I'm replying back with the formally grateful and ready to move on poop emoji. What? What? As voiced by Patrick Stewart. No. Look at this. He just texted me the emoji that's waving his hand like he's saying bye with an expression that says he's going to break all bonds, but without being resentful about it. <laughs> Perfect. We solved this as a team. Cheers to us. And cheers to the creative people that have turned every complex feeling and scenario into a friendly and colorful emoji. <laughs> you gave plus game two pl charm plus one creativity. If only life was that easy. If only the movie was that good. Ugh. After a fearsome battle, you find that you, Veer, and Scott are the sole survivors of a bloody and terrible dodgeball match. Damn, are we the only ones alive? Shoot, I can't afford to lose. I don't want that on my academic resume. Okay. No! No, losing! Losing is like... Not a good thing! <laughs> Don't worry, Scott! Losing is like winning, except it's losing! What? 
I'm not sure if I should feel worried or relieved. Worried, <coughs> Scott. Losing is bad. <coughs> a loser, Scott, is a bad Scott. No! I don't want to be bad, Scott. <laughs> then what we need is a fast way to turn this game around. So there's no way to win dodgeball math unless you complete the games of those dodgeballs who know them, or time to unleash your sick acting skill, pretend you call it as easy to stop the match. Let's I am um, no. Yeah. Yeah. You swiftly flee to the actual mystery of sports and start a complex legal process. After an absurd whirlwind of legal action and bribery, you finally distractly change the rules of dodgeball. You go back to high school, and the new rule set favors your team in an incomprehensible ways. Scott. If that doesn't catch in the blue flamingo, they gain 50 more points. What? Gotcha! You two dance the tangles so we can win this thing! You dance all the right moves that officially end the match way ahead of the other team who are still combing the hair of their team llama. Oh, don't what? question it, never- We turned it into Calvin Ball, Shh. It's Master Prom, don't question it. <laughs> well. Well, I have no idea what just happened, but according to this rule book, you won! Holy cow, kids! I don't remember any of these rules. That's great. I guess my memory's lost at remembering stuff. Don't worry, coach. Losing is like winning, except instead of winning, it's losing. That's right, Vera. And if you've learned that, it means I've won at the ancient sport of teaching. Aww. Who knew that subverting the rules of a sport was that easy? We live in a wonderful and twisted world. You end up reverting the rules back to how they were before, but boy, was that fun. You gain plus two creativity and one fun. Huzzah! Occupation time, Twitch streamer. Uh, writer. How likely would it be for me to get a job as the selected occupation at some point? Okay, you win. <laughs> no, I... I actually kind of see myself being a writer, too. Oh, okay, let's see. Uh, I read your stuff. It's good, so... Thank you. Oh, God, and I just noticed the... And I just noticed the cyan pixel that other people pointed out in the Discord earlier. It haunts me. The what? Look at the top right part of the screen. There's a, bl there's a dead cyan pixel. I thought that was just a laptop. I thought that was just an issue with my laptop. <laughs> also, I heard sirens just pass us. <coughs> okay, just hit random. I don't know which one. I guess I'm more likely to become a Twitch streamer than an author. <laughs> do both. Tw Twitch stream your writing. Let's do this. I could. Hmm. Do I get... No, your stats are pretty even out. I'm gonna go get a stat. Yeah. You're about to take the first bite of your delicious cafeteria lunch when Coach appears out of nowhere! Stop! You can't eat that! You're not warmed up yet! Do you want to strain your jaw? Sprain your esophagus? Pull your intestines? I think I've done one of those ones. I thought I taught you kids better than this. Come on, stand up. Let's get off food on. You look disappointed. Don't worry, little buddy. I'll let you choose the workout. We've got two options. Play with your Play food? Specifically. Specifically. Or an absolutely ridiculous number of push-ups. Yes. Um... Okay, you're doing the one punch. A monster after my own heart. Let's push up! You and Coach drop to the floor and embark on a kinesiological journey from which there is no return. Within minutes, your mind is a push-up pill void. Within an hour, you have left your body. You die. You meet God. He's impressed by how many push-ups you can do. I think God is gender fluid. Um, we've seen one of them refer to God as he, one as she, and I think in one of the official mods <laughs> as they. God is I... gender fluid. God is God. I'm not questioning that. I'm not questioning his, their pronouns. You go back to your body so you can do more push-ups. You realize it's not your body. You're pushing up for the entire world. Okay, Atlas. I turned in the... No, not Atlas. I turned in the Chuck Norris. My god. It seems like centuries, but only 90 minutes have passed when you regain consciousness, enlarge in spirit and in bicep. You gain plus four boldness. Okay, bodybuilder and mirror, is that hot or not? Yes. Let's go talk to Liam. When you reach Liam and Damien's table, you find an absolutely
pieces of food, but covered in paperwork. There are so many questions. Do we really need all these special forms? Can't we just write death threats on regular paper? Oh my god, that voice for Damien. Yeah, demon de voice. Mm. For the last time, Damien, substantive change within an administrative system requires mastery of the mechanisms of bureaucracy. What if we wrote the death threats on really fancy paper? Liam turns... Oh, yeah. As you can see, my mastery of real, real politics has caused me to embrace an unlikely alley in my quest for reform. I have no idea what he's saying. I just want the cafeteria food to stop being so boring. You see, our interests are aligned. I too desire men you less pedestrian. Sure, either way, we're stuck on the last bit. We know we want the menu to change, but we don't know what to change it to. Yes, we have indeed encountered a culinary block. Perhaps you can suggest something appropriately artistic? A white plate with a single sprig of parsley in the center. The essence of minimalism. Or a bowl of knives. The essence of knives. I think I know which one you want to do. Hello, my dude? Did I lose connection with you? Okay, the connection went hazy on his end. Bummer. Trying something. Okay. I'm going to try something else now. See if we can do. Okay. Now, I need you to try your mic again. Cause I cannot hear ya. Try using his phone. Still not working. Oh crud. <laughs> oh wait, okay, it looks like I am There we go. There we go. I I was able to hear him again for a, for a moment. <laughs> it wouldn't be one of my streams. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yes. I oh, okay. Yeah. You do. Yay. Yeah. You do not. Okay. Nobody wants to see my face. Whoops. Don't worry. They won't be able to see your face. Yeah. I will take the white plate. The essence of minimalism. Yes. That's it. That's it. Don't you see, Damien? It's a bold commentary on the emptiness of consumption. Really? It sounds, really, it sounds like a plate with a leap on it. <clears throat> oh, you'll never understand. 
But like, why even have a leaf on the plate if you're trying to be a minimalist? My god, you're right. Why even have a plate? Why have anything at all? That's it. Our new menu item is... Nothing. The school receives Liam's petition. From now on, the lunch line will include one empty tray. A great victory for artistic expression. Galaxy Brain activate. Also, <coughs> also, it's it still costs like a dollar twenty-five. America, uh, a Furby, a microphone. How interested to watch the cast Kazakhstan version of Lord of the Rings if in that version the ring was replaced by a Furby? Okay, just imagine Elijah Wood running around with a freaking Furby. <laughs> To the auditorium! I still need the creativity, Liam. When you go to remove the <laughs> costume, you see Scott still wearing his tree suit. You haven't seen a tree look this bum since Woody the Ent's parents were cut down to make way for that mega mall. Oh no! Murder! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> anyway, you ask Scott what's wrong. I really thought I was going to be an important part of this play, bro. I mean, I mean, trees are important, right? They give oxygen and shade and you can pee on them. Plus, the director called me in a, in a trezzo. That sounds like, that sounds way fancier than an actor, so I don't know why I feel so useless. <coughs> a trezzo means prop, you imbecile. You're not an actor. Your scenery. Oh no! But I'm not scenery. I'm a person. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> With the feelings, and my feelings want people to clap for me and tell me I'm a good boy. You are a good boy, Scott. You're a good boy. This is a. I can. Why do I feel this on a spiritual level? <laughs> people in the chat tell Scott he's a good boy, even though he's a video game character. <laughs> Please tell me I'm the best boy. Yes, please. You poor mon- you poor mongrel. The entire purpose of scenery is to be in the background. To remain unnoticed. Although, altering the form such that a tree becomes a primary force would be dreadfully avant-garde. In fact, it could be my greatest artistic achievement yet. All right, Scott, I'm going to make your dream reality. We need to brainstorm. How can we make the tree the center of the play? He's not a tree. He's a tree person. <coughs> he comes alive in the last second and rips the bad guy now. Or I'm trying to... I haven't seen this event in a long time. I'm trying to remember my stats for this. Let's... I, you know, let's see the bottom one. Everyone... You mean all of us would simply stand motionless for two hours, dressed as various and random objects? That would be the most daring performance ever conceived. I think there was a movie like this. A rejection of the tyranny of action and plot and characters and entertainment. What? what? But won't people get bored? Of course. That's how you know it's <laughs> art. <laughs> oh, Liam. How wrong you are. You know what? You can sell a banana tape to a wall for two hundred seventy thousand dollars. Yeah. Hooray! It'll be the toast one, so it'll be super important too. You leave Scott with Liam, who has promised to teach him how to become the tree. On a Wait, tree hold up, hold up! Before we continue, yes. I just realized something. What? The bird on Scott? No, we are not morning wood. That out. No, it's a morning woodcock. No! Move on. Hey, you said it right then. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna head to the gym again. You sit down to see a fish run by with a light. Maybe Miranda's back to tanning. We could trash my. We could trash my bed. And fuck, this really doesn't seem like the best thing to do with calculus to constantly, constantly bring it down like this. They haven't noticed you yet. Hey, what's this fucking noob doing here? 
This is Amira. She found the processor. Oh. Welcome aboard, noob. Well, well that was fast. Maybe you can warm your way into a threesome later. Mm hmm. No. Now we Maybe have the I baddest ass here to help us out. Maybe if I was playing as Vicky, yes, I would gladly welcome the threesome. That's moon. Damn right we do. Now we just need a backup plan. I could fuck him with my deadly dick. No. God damn it's not fire. You thirsty. I won't even bother explaining why that's a bad idea. As it is, I have a better idea. We find his kill code. What? I, I will, I will. Hey, that's fucking shit, Liam. Oh, no. <coughs> oh crap, two options. Best sell this before, lo before lovers quarrel. Wink. I will not screw him with with my murder sausage. I don't even have a sausage to begin with, so I guess it's kill code time. <coughs> Thought so. You see, even if you can't hack ozone web, you can activate a kill code. That's it. I'm out. Now, here's a kill code that Scott accidentally downloaded. Only as a last resort, though. How'd you get the money? Why is there money involved? I'm not sure, but hey. Roll with it. It's good. But yeah, Liam leaves you with kill code plus one smarts and two money. That weekend... That weekend, Liam contacted you for your advice. No, 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 you misunderstand. I don't want your advice. I want to hear you express an opinion. Just to see if you're capable of forming one. Of course. Specific specifically, I'd like to hear your opinion on Brian's cultural literacy. Is he cultured like an artisanal cheese or uncultured like milk? Cultured, he can tell the difference between theater and theater. <coughs> he can. Ahem, I mean, so can I. I definitely heard the difference between the two words you just said. Did you? If you'll excuse me, I have to go find Brian now. For romantic reasons, not to ask him to explain what you said. Why would you think that? Liam hurries off on an artistic mission. Silly Liam, the difference is that theater is done by actor, whereas theater is done by actors. You gain plus three creativity. Out. Tweeting. How fast and aggressively you would be kicked out of an airplane for work? I don't think you'd be kicked off an airplane for tweeting. Ah, uh, that but depends. Then, Am I the president of the United States? Boom, boom. <laughs> then again, airplane mode. I don't think you can tweet on an airplane at all. No, like no. That's that's how I get kicked off. I aggressively tweet while saying, "No, I will not activate airplane mode," while staring them directly in the eyes. <laughs> but also, airplanes are kind of cramped. I don't think you can work out on an airplane. I mean, if you can, more power to you. <coughs> I guess tweeting is a bigger offense than working out and possibly hitting everybody. Yeah. Uh, more creativity! Again, Liam likes that creative butt. Wow. You find, you find Liam, Liam storming out of the dresser. Dylan wearing his very fancy costume. He goes straight to Vera, where she sits in the audience as usual, judging people. You've got to help me, Vera. Art is in jeopardy. <coughs> help you, please. <coughs> Not to be a dramaturge specifically because it allowed me to criticize people without doing any real work. You may return to your calculated apathy immediately after helping me sign underground supergroup Yoga Resort to score our play. You want Yoga Resort to score our play? The ones who did help me on drowning in tractors? How does that work? I hate to admit it, but that's actually a pretty cool idea. The fact that someone besides me know about Yoko Resort only makes me slightly less excited about this plan, which should tell you how important this is to me. How are you going to Nerd. 
Ugh, that's exactly what the director said. Everyone is trying to smell my artistic spark beneath the boot heel of capitalism. It appears that I must make some concessions to the invisible hand on the market if I am to realize my dream. Top one. Oh, of course. This will require only a minor adjustment on my underground criminal empire. That actually does lead to question how many of them I are mean, orphans. I mean, what is a drug? What is a drugs? <laughs> what, what is drugs? What is a drugs? I, I, yes, I would like one cocaine. What? No time for faint innocence, Vera. This is about art. What is a drugs? I love that. I want to use that from now on. The two of you get to work. Smuggling kilos of cocaine across the border and using it to make powdered donuts. Oh, so like the 80s. Soon almost everyone at the school is hooked on cocaine. Most of the actors quit the play to focus on their addiction. Exactly like the 80s. That's fine by Liam, though. He really just wants the yoga resort to come to play. And they do! Sure, some people got their lives ruined, but somebody's gotta suffer for Liam's art, right? You gave plus two bonus and plus one sports. Catch me outside, how I, about that? Yes. <laughs> Later, you hear you wandering through the halls when you hear this when you hear a voice from around a corner. Hey, Psst. I seem to have accidentally turned a bit of stone with my gaze. Uh, Whoopsies! Don't get me wrong, she totally deserved it. Her nose is obviously fake, plus that nail polish abominable. But this isn't exactly the first time I've done this, and Principal Giant Spider said if I did it again, I'd get detention. So now I need to dispose of yet another body, and thought that since you're so attractive and kind and clever, you'd be willing to cover up the literal murder I just committed with no questions asked. Right? Why did I hear Alpha above for a split second? I don't know. Okay, easy! We'll dress her up in some stuff from the theater and set her up into the quad like she's a new art piece. Never you feel my lovely murderess. My good buddy, my Mr. My good but Hammer, will make a good part <coughs> of the evidence. I'll even get the nose as a trophy. Now let's go with the... Let's, let's dress it up. Oh, I love it. A plan so stupid, no one will ever think someone as brilliant as me would cook up climb up with it. Hey! And the benefits, I get away with murder. Literally, and my family gets credit for a donation. I don't have the whole anything because you'll do it all for me. And from now on, <coughs> anytime anybody thinks of crossing me, I can just point to the statue and frown and shake my head. And then, well, what are you standing here for? Get the skank a costume. Make sure it includes this glass with the big nose and the mustache. You know, the Groucho Marx ones? Oh, this is gonna be good. Ye Grusho marked. Hmm. You call your masterpiece nothing to see here, and it's barely reviewed by Ride On Magazine. You gain two creativity and a money. And a month. Everybody choose a br uh Tesla. Tesla. Playbill. K-pop on Broadway. Advertised by Playbill. I was gonna say a music video with all just driving cars, but that would be actually kind of cool, so I guess you win. <laughs> well, stranger things have happened. We've had- we have a rap musical but Let's do this. starring <laughs> the- our first secretary of the treasury. That was a thing? Um, it's Hamilton, dang it! Oh yeah, right. My bad. And also- My brain pop, pooped. Also a pop concert starring the Six Wives of Henry VIII. Right, that was also a thing. So a K-pop musical doesn't actually sound that far-fetched. You know, actually, I went to Korea once. You know what I saw there? What? A musical about Napoleon. Okay. It was weird and kind of cool. Like, they had Napoleon look all intimidating stuff. Actually, yeah, no, hold up. I just, I found the picture. Share it with the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I 
there was drinking a customary light type scotch because you can drink whatever the hell you want at the school, but Scott's not making it easy for her. Hey, Mira, hey, Mira what you drinking? What? Scotch? Why? Because it smells like a delicious forest fire, and I'm curious, what's it called? Scotch. Yes? No, no, no that's what it's called. What? Scotch! Yes? No, I'm not saying your name. I'm saying the name of the drink I'm drinking. It's scotch! It's mine? No, it's mine, dang it. Then why is it called Scots? That's just what it's called, dang it. Oh, is it like an energy drink for Scots? Uh, I mean, it's like an energy drink for Scottish people. Hey, I'm a Scottish person. I'm as Scottish as possible to be. I'm the most Scot. Oh, hold up, hold up. Let me do that again. Try it again. Hey, I'm a Scottish person. I'm as Scottish as it's possible to be. I'm the most Scot. <laughs> you know what? If you're not doing Scot with a Scottish accent, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> I'm doing that from here on out. No. I, what will I it take you to on. get you to drop this issue? Scott's not gonna drop it unless you do something as you- So you cut it and say? Yeah, yeah it's called Scott, but today is opposite day, so everything that Scott is actually Vera's. Don't- Don't you mean today isn't opposite day? No. <laughs> uh huh. I'm not sorry, not Vera. I guess I'll be- Taking your drink. Wink. Wait, time out. Is everything that Scots is bad as? Do I have to give Vera all my stuff? Yes. I mean, no. Oh, okay. And does Vera have to give me all of her stuff? When did you become Indian? <laughs> I don't know. Hold up. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. And does Vera have to give me all of her stuff? Fortunately for you, I have a lot of stuff, and none of my possessions are owned by collect disguise shell companies. Now, a lot. Now I'm going to give you my wallet. Oh God, that was. <laughs> okay, okay, boy. Opposite day shit is the best, isn't it? It sure is. After Scott leaves you alone, you and Vera definitely don't spend all his money on cocaine. <laughs> boom, boom, ba -dum, boom, boom, like boom, 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 Like the second the last event Vera was involved in, when you, we bought a bunch of cocaine for Leo's play. Um, I'm all the marijuana man myself. You know the old joke, a rubber and a vampire sit down at the cafeteria table to not eat. Friend Liam, you seem quite focused, thus I apologize for interrupting. Hmm. But I cannot help noticing that you are frequently absorbed in your technology to the exclusion of all else. Hmm. hmm. As a piece of technology myself, I must admit to being the synthetic equivalent of flattered. Mm hmm. But something does not compute. I spend my days and nights longing for organic connection. Trying and failing to artificially generate the sensation of being loved. But you, with the entire organic population of this high school, your fingertips, choose to instead use those fingertips to stimulate your smartphone device. It intensifies my loneliness just to watch. Lean into the feeling. Loneliness is the third coolest emotion right behind Sundere and none. <coughs> I do not wish to learn into that feeling, Liam. I wish for you to lean out of it. You don't know what you're asking, Cal. Do you know how many photos are shared on Instagram alone every hour? 3,958,333.33 repeating. It was supposed to be a rhetorical question, but you've only streamed my point, which is this. What if while I was away from my phone seeking organic connection, one of those Instagram posts were to be bad? Who would post a devastatingly condescending emoji? Who would ironically share along with a gift of Marcel Duchamp languidly smoking a cigarette? Who, I ask you, who? The internet is defenseless without me. I cannot miss a moment. Can's a point. This is unhealthy and bad, and you should not do it anymore. He's true, but you shouldn't say it. Whoa, things are getting pretty heated at this cafeteria table. 
better resolve this dispute one way or another before your ice cream melts. Check your robo privilege! <laughs> you are so right, friend Brian. I did not take into consideration at all friends Liam's weak and limited mind. My mind is neither weak nor limited. You just don't understand how to properly enjoy social media the way I do. Nothing has ever been truer. Please, Liam, teach me the ways of social media. You know so much more than I. He says while gently caressing his face. Oh, God. I, I can't tell if you're being sincere or sarcastic, he said wistfully. Oh, my God. I assure you, my program makes me incapable of sarcasm. I thirst for knowledge. It's the only thing in this cafeteria I thirst for. Oh my god, this is a setup to one of Liam's yaoi's! <laughs> I have been waiting my whole life for this moment. I will teach you everything, small robot. Oh god, it is a yaoi. <laughs> you will absorb it all and become the ultimate social media machine! Literally! He said unzipping. Oh god, no! <laughs> Here, the Here are the filters which are bad. Puppy dog, kitty cat, bunny rabbit, Almost anything that has a hyphen in the first word ends in a Y. But it only applies to animals. Vaguely beige and blurry obscure are both excellent. What? An internal scan shows that many more people use aforementioned animal filters, making them popular, therefore making them... Bad. The pupil is becoming the master. Liam's thrilled that you've granted him this opportunity to show off his superior taste to calculester. And you all learn a lot how... About how confusing social media I really <coughs> should be. Okay, challenge anyone who just has this game or watching this game. Cut out how many con check how many out of context conversation is just porn. <laughs> One week by bare naked ladies. Um I don't know, uh The song doesn't end. How plausible would it be for you to get an Amish community who've never heard of the commercial music super into the song? Well, it was the biggest hit in the 90s, and the Amish people like to believe it's still the 1890s, so... Law of Equivalent Exchange, because why not? Or the song that doesn't end. You know how the song goes, right? Kind of. Yeah, no, that would get stuck in your head. Let's just... Is yeah. I just imagine someone just getting a Bluetooth speaker, sitting on their phone, throwing it in the middle of the Amish community and see what happens. <laughs> um, <coughs> I was originally going to say Alexander Hamilton. Yep. Uh, smart. No, auditorium. Let go. Lately, you've been being cute with Liam, but in an ironic sense. Mm. I need to tolerate you, which is like third base for Liam. So tonight you're having a picnic at the graveyard. It's like a date. Dr. Tully isn't a date. Because dates are like super cliche. <laughs> <coughs> but it's totally a date. Yeah. Oh, it is time. You're going to kiss him. You practice a lot with your pillow, which might or might not be a body pillow customized with a real like, size full body picture of Liam. Maybe. Yep. Because so many people not, wanted that. Because because that's not available on the backer kit. It's only Dami and Polly and Zoe. To be fair, Zoe best waifu, and you can't. As don't lie to yourself. Daddy. Yeah. And yeah. also best girl, Polly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you do realize that's a variable orgy. Oh, yes. Well, here you go, then. You know what, Brian? I've been thinking about the concept of kissing. Yes. And not because being with you makes me think about kissing. Uh huh. But don't you think kissing is such an outdated, vulgar concept? Your your best way of showing your feelings is putting your mouth over another person's mouth. But well, you want to put your mouth over his mouth, the dang blame it. <laughs> Come on, Brian. Come on, Brian. Just around the corner, quickly. Think of a never before before seen way of showing your feelings to Liam. Don't show your feelings, sing your feelings. Or being figurative is for cowards. Real winners are always literal. Show Liam your feelings. Top one. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure that's top one. Uh, wait, is singing fun or creativity? You know what? I mean, 
Yeah, top one is creativity and bottom one is boldness, but they're close enough for it to for you to win both ways. And I've never I, seen the bottom one succeed before. My boldness is 10. It probably won't work. I mean, it's between 10 and 14, so like it could. Yeah, no, I'm I'm just I'm going to sing. Play I'm sorry. Safe. Yes. You're I'll be bold another time. You burst into a very charming song. It's so <coughs> charming that the people surrounding you all join in and they all appear to be professional singers. My very god, it's like of, the movies. Very out of character for Brian. From the ravens and the dead trees to the people visiting the graves of their loved ones. Don't you want to get with a zombie no! prostitute? No, 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 no. Just wow. I thought showing your feelings was cheesy, but this... This is so cheesy that's kind of cool. The caretaker of the graveyard comes to kick you out for making a ruckus. And then you start a second song and the keeper can't help but join in too. What's this? You can control mine just by singing? I must admit, that's quite impressive. Test your ability, Leah makes you sing many more songs. You suspect he has ulterior reasons, like maybe okay. enjoying them. Ten bucks says he made you sing, be as loud as you want to be when you're making love. No! <laughs> Avenue Q! Come on, it's yeah. Avenue Q! No, no, you're, you're, you're not even singing a the theme song right! <laughs> yeah, fine. This realization gives you plus two fun and a charm. Yay! <coughs> Meanwhile, I'm gonna be bold now. You wander into the bathrooms armed with everything you could possibly need. Oh, convenient. RUN! What? What the fuck? I'll hold him off! Again, what? Again, what? Where the hell is he? Where the hell is he? Look out! Oh no! Destroy all life forms, cleanse planet for ozone web! Oh no. Oh shit. Oh no! What the actual fuck? Calculista grabs hold of Liam while with Vera trying to get the thumb drive in his ass again <laughs> while Damien tries to rip Liam away. It's up to you, too. Oh, Satan, did you just tell the murder's robot that you're the one he's looking for? Target acquired. Eliminating target. Oh, no. Kel picks you up by your throat, and there's a keypad in reach, but just barely. And so is the taser. Quick, dumbass, before you black out. Hacker time. Stop. Hacker time. Bum ba dum bum bum. You start typing, hoping that you punch in the correct sequence, and Cal's grip loosens. O -M Wait, what's that? Cut! Oh, that was great, guys. Especially you, Cal. I didn't think you'd be able to pull off such a mean act. I am <laughs> it was my pleasure, Zoe. What the <coughs> I, I did. Swore. What just happened? I almost swore on my stream. I. Did. Did we just get played? Liam. Loved your simmering room as a Damien. Oh, that was on purpose. Oh, um, I need to go. Liam, be Vera, real honest with me. Vera, you were. Vera, you were badass. I know, Zoe. And Damien, you were. Fucking metal! Fucking metal! He said it, not you. Oh, and Amira, you managed to flawlessly ad lib the entire thing! Here! Take this three money. You're cut of the profits. Meet me in my house for the premiere. What the fuck? I guess you just go with Zoe. Go with Zoe. Oh. Don't question it. Roll with it. Um, 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 okay. Just, just hook me up with Liam. You know how this goes. Okay. I don't know who to go with, so... <coughs> I don't know who to go with, though. I think you have to go with Zoe so you can or follow her master? home? I uh, don't know. Ask the, ask the mod person. Sa Sapphire! Sapphire, we need Mom, you! Help me! Uh, help me! Who do I. Hold up, I'll, I'll ask. Who I'll ask. Go... Um... No, wait, no, she's responding to me. Who do I go oh. to prom with? <laughs> do I go with Cal since we've been following him most of the entire time? Zoe? We have Liam, Damien, Vera? Who do we go with? Anyone but Miranda, I'm... Scott, and Polly. Okay! I guess go with... Yeah, but I've been... Okay, yeah, sure. That's I mean, great. I don't know so what's I'm going on. I'm going after Vera after 
You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to Monster Prom with you. Okay. Just. God, I hope asking. this works. <clears throat> go ahead and ask Emma. Like, actually, say. Liam, no. please. Be the dead man of my eye. Prom. It's not that I love the concept of prom, but we need to be there if we only to remind everyone we're cooler than them. Oh, he's in a cool outfit. It's almost a duty. So we should do it, huh? Aw, prom day was beautiful! One of my ships. One of my ships. For once, Liam, For once, Liam seemed, seemed relaxed, relaxed without feeling. Need to act cool. He put all his serious posing aside and told you a bit about the time he spent this part of the coven and about when he was in a K pop band. <laughs> I'm sorry, Monster Prom people, can we please get that ending at some point? You told him you admired that about him, how he has no issue trying new things, as wacky as they might sound. Smout, you indulge them. When you're immortal, you need to explore life to its fullest and always be eager to discover new things you like. Aww. Oh, side note to anyone listening on the stream, my ship song for Brian and Liam is I Think I Love You from a Korean drama. Aww. Look it up, it is cute as hell. Then he says... No, wait, this is your line. Then he said. And then, and you know what? Covering a problem with you has turned to be a new thing I seem to like very much. Aww. You knock on Zoe's door, knowing that everyone else is here for the special premiere of Judgment Day, the newest fan film by Zoe. Oh, I'm so glad you showed up. Of course, <laughs> I didn't get to see Le Damien and Liam in their underwear, so that's a bonus. Wait, what? Um, hmm. Speaking of which, starring Calculester. I am very excited to see the final product. There, Vera. Oh, I still need to bill you. Liam. Normally I would say this is too mainstream, but the quality isn't bad and it supports robots. Also, bro also Liam got you a ticket. Damien. You know what? Do I, do I really have to say this one? Fuck yes! Damien Vavager of Twinks. Sapphire, you thirsty! <laughs> Scott, as a minor role, as a Mandarin. <laughs> I was told there would be meat. How majestic. Miranda, for getting her serfs to help out on set. Hot damn, look at that kimono, I think. The kimonos are Japanese, this is Chinese. It was either that oh. or the farm. Yes! Holly, you can try the snacks thanks to the brownies! Oh, uh oh Holly looks so cute! She looks so cute! Yeah, she adorable. <laughs> no props, boo! And Amira, this film wouldn't have been possible without you! Wow, you head inside, take your seat amongst the others, and watch the film. Huh, not bad. Liam finally admits to the reason why his father's hand was there. He stole it from Van Helsing. Father's hand? Huh. At one point, you stop watching the film to watch Damien Liam make out instead. What? <laughs> Just what? <laughs> and at the end, Zoe stands up. Let's make another movie! Yay! Sapphire, you thirsty. I'm just saying this now, you thirsty. <laughs> that is a lot of events. Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the monster prom, we kept living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, love happened, and it was wonderful. Pfft, the school play was a success in the end. Mm, yay! The New Yorker said, never has a tree been as compelling and convincing as the tree of that play. Simply mesmerizing. Oh! Well, that's nice! Yeah. Liam kept doing her so hard that he eventually evaporated and became the concept of cooling itself. Oh, yeah, sure. Leave your zombu behind, bitch. <laughs> as he left the physical plane, the last thing Liam did was give everyone a condescending look. That was zombie. Vera kept being fierce, strong, and stunning. Some haters once said adult life would put that mean bitch in her place. But you know what? We ended up making adult life our own bitch. For those three weeks, the monster prom seemed large in life, and then it was gone. Just like that. 
the battle for Monster Prom might have ended then, but there were plenty of battles left in that war called youth. But once again, we were young and afraid, and we were ready to start. And cue the best song in this entire thing. Alright, Sapphire texted me. I love how Mazaka was like, Sapphire, you thirsty! For like 90% of the stream. For bad jokes and callbacks to other events. <laughs> I am a li- I am- I am 80% sure life had in store in me that I'd be a performer of some sort. I mean, the point of the game is for us to be thirsty. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, do, 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 do. <laughs> I still want an animated music video of all the voice actors doing like a <coughs> chorus thing. All yep. the voice actors. Yes. Like, just imagine how how YouTube would implode if they if they all collabed in like a big musical number. Well, Nate <laughs> and Aaron have collaborated a couple of times. Yes, they have. And Nate and Christina too. Yep. Makes sense. They used to be a couple. Yeah. And I know pros D can sing sometimes, so like, just imagine a PC just like seeing It's a Beautiful Sarah Day or Williams something, and then it gets... And Sarah Williams, who voices Polly and yep. Mickey. Yep, yep. Anyway, let's take a look at my ending Polaroid. Awww... This is why I shipped them, that photo. Well then, it was a lovely time playing with you and performing for all you weird people out there, weird, lovely people, but I now must go we do must... things. We... He must go now. His planet needs him. Yes, it does, and I also need to feed. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Mazako. And I'm the Sega Sister, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Monster Mon Mondays. Good night!